us to even come before you again and to uh, and to come before the people of NOB Dallas. We're just thankful. We're a thankful group. We're thankful for everything that God, you know, has planned for us. We understand that we are the Joshua generation, mm -hmm. and we are moving. We are moving. We understand that everything that had that happened when we were in the wilderness were things that was teaching us. They were things that were building us, things that were developing us, developing our character, developing our strength, and helping us to be able to know that once we cross over, we can stand, we can take the land, and we can have dominion like it's been promised and like it's been uh, purposed and planned for us. So we thank God for that. Uh, we, we are in a new location today. We're at the library. We might be doing some things a little differently, so we want you to always be watching out. Watch out for what NOB Dallas is doing. Watch out for where NOB Dallas is going. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 Watch out because we are we are moving and we are we are ready to accept the challenge of doing the things that God has called us to do. Yeah. And we're gonna get ready for our pastor as he comes. Yeah. Give him a hand. Yeah. Amen. We can all we can all sit down. I'm thankful today. Um, uh, she done left me. <laughs> I'm thankful today for, uh, uh, as she said, in this uh, particular setting as we are shifting. And I think this is a, a, a picture of what God is actually doing right now. Uh, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to prophesy as well as teach. I'm teaching tonight, but I know that I'm on a mandate to start uh, giving specific instruction to, there are several people right now, and perhaps you're under the sound of my voice right now, and you're trying to figure out what it is that God is doing right now. Why is it that things are so different in my life right now? Why is it that things are, uh, the things that I could, my usual go, go to methods are not working for me in this season? What is really going on? And I don't want you to think that you're crazy. I don't want you to think that God is even mad at you. What I need you to understand is the fact that God is shifting right now. Right. Amen. He is doing something a little different than uh, the typical. Let's call it typical. I, I, want, I want you to understand that this is not a typical season in your life. Uh, as she was saying that the wilderness experience taught us a lot of things. And there, there are many people that are still in their wilderness experience. You're still there, mm -hmm. and, I, and and all that getting get understanding, yes. so that you won't curse a process that's for you. Right. So that you won't curse a process that is actually full of goodies, if you will. There are some things that in in certain situations people don't even think that that blessings are there. Oh yeah. But you got to be the one that can recognize or discern the place of blessing, and God is unusual. I, I got a motto, I always say this, that God hides his best gifts in the pile of unpopular stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the wilderness experience is not a place that you should be broke, hungry, or lost. The wilderness experience is not a place to be broke, hungry, or lost. We got to get that. It's not a place. I actually taught a teaching on the wilderness being God's executive office. Yes. That's where he gives his best uh, uh, instruction because it's the place of uh, uh, the least amount of distraction. Most mm -hmm. of your friends won't follow you into the wilderness. Right. They stand at the door and wait for you to come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what happens as a consequence of that, God uses these experiences to uh, be able to get you one-on-one. -on -one. This next season of your life is a one-on-one -on -one season. Yeah. The Facebook family, do me a favor. Share this with, share this with people. Our intentions in being here in Dallas and all the all the times and areas that God allow us to teach is to bring people into a place where they understand what God is saying. Because this could be a very confusing time. This time could be very confusing. If you don't understand what God is doing and you are operating out of default, it's going to be very confusing to participate in it. I've got to participate. And so it's important. It's important that I recognize what God is doing, so I'll be willing to participate. I gotta be willing to participate. And so the wilderness is not a place of hunger, it's not a place to be lost, neither is it, is it a place to be broke. Right. I, I wish we had the uh, camera on, Pastor Marissa, when you gave your testimony, because that's so important. Because there are people struggling with things right now, and if you're not careful, we all think that God has an indictment against us. Right. Because that's been our teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, through faith, 
Faith has everything to do with things that you cannot see. Mm -hmm. If you exactly. can see it, it's not faith. Right. Faith has everything to do with things not seen. That's what Scripture said. Faith is some things, oh, oh, oh. evidence of things not seen. Uh, since our doctrine was not correct, we thought we should see. Faith never came by seeing. Faith always came by hearing. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to speak life to every situation that I don't see life in. I got to constantly declare the goodness of the Lord. And that's why the scripture says that you got you justified by your declaration. Mm -hmm. And so I'm declaring on each of you here and the people that are watching that you're going to see what God desires for you to see in this next season of your life. Amen. But it's going to take a little shifting. And so and so wilderness experiences that we are many are facing right now it's not an indictment. It's actually a calling of God to get you away from your distractions because he's trying to tell you something and you got too many good people. When you get too many good people with too much good advice, you don't usually listen to God because mm -hmm. we live in a democratic society. What does that mean? Numbers always rule. Yeah. You get enough people with numbers telling you that it can't happen, you're going to tend to believe that it can't happen. Mm -hmm. Even though God said, because God is standing there by himself saying, hey, we can make this happen if you follow the instructions. So, for those of you that are experiencing wilderness season, remember, the wilderness is God's executive office. That's where he speaks his most crucial and strategic plan in the place of the wilderness. That's what his office is set up. Again, it's not for you to be broke there because before God had children of Israel to leave in Exodus, he made sure that they had enough riches to last them all the way across the journey. Yes. Number one, they didn't have to worry about food. Why? Because he always caused the quail to fly yes. low so that they can have enough. So much so, so until they just gushed out of their nose. And number three, they were not lost. Contrary to popular misunderstanding, they were not lost. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because remember Moses' uh, uh, father-in-law, Jethro, came to bring his sons to visit him in the wilderness. And again, you don't have to be the smartest person in the entire world. If your father-in-law bring your sons to visit you, when he leaves, you follow him out of it. You follow him out of it. So it's not a place to be lost. So what is this wilderness experience all about? Again, it's the place that God uses to get rid of my distractions. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you that are in the wilderness, it's just a moment to get rid of your distractions. Agree quickly. Amen. Agree quickly. Yes. Agree quickly yes. so that you can leave. Mm -hmm. Agree quickly. Now listen, Jethro came to bring his sons, but Moses didn't leave. Here's what you need to understand. No matter how many other people come and go, you can't leave until you get the lesson. Come on. You can't leave until you get the instruction. You can't leave until you understand what God is saying. Yes. So the delay right now in your wilderness experience is because there's something you need to get. Amen. A lesson not learned is a lesson repeated. Yes. And so yes. we're thankful. Now I want to I want to delve into something because I'm gonna continue this. Uh, I started it today at lunchtime up there from a teacher tonight and I, perhaps I'm a teacher tomorrow too. Because this is a shifting season for a lot of people. You're shifting. Don't be surprised at the prompt you get from God. Don't be surprised at the prompt you get from God. Now, you've got many people that are giving you diagrams to a successful calling. That's all it. A mm -hmm. successful calling. Mm -hmm. They tell you what you can do to make sure you got a successful calling. Be careful in this season because God is doing something different, right. such a new thing. Mm -hmm. A new thing. That's what Isaiah 43 says. God is doing a new thing. New thing. If you're looking at your thing and it's not new, uh -huh. perhaps it's a thing that was done and it's not God. Uh -huh. Now, I need to ask y'all a question. Do God have the authority to shift when he wants? Yes, he yes. Yes. yes, he does. He has the authority to shift. So why is it we get all messed up when he says I'm shifting? Mm. Why, does he, why, why do we have to consult with the powers that be when he says I'm shifting? He says I'm God. <laughs> I can chill. And, and, and so the, the, the cliches that we use are these. For such a time as this. If God has shifted for such a time as this, why am I having problems in such a time as this? Right. Let's go. Let's shift. Let's shift. Let's shift. Now, I promise you, if you will hear God, I promise you, if you will hear God, there's provision for your move. Yes, sir. There's provision. For your move. For those of you that will hear God, there's provision. Mm -hmm. If you haven't shared me, let's go with this. Now, today I started teaching. I started teaching from Joshua chapter number one. And I was teaching how 
the, the text was so powerful that, that God tells Moses, because here's a, a shift in instructions. Here's the season that a shift in instruction. I'm going to read this to you, and then I'm going to go to something that God, something else that God shared me. This is the season of your greatest information. Get ready for information to come like you never. God always sends strong revelations before he gets ready to shift you and manifest you. This is a manifest season for you that are listening to me right now. It's going to be so incredible. He's going to bless you so tremendously that it's going to make you forget all the struggling days that you have. Yes. He's going to bless you so tremendously that your struggles are going to be forgotten. When you bring forth this baby, you will, you will remember the pain no more. No more. Yeah. Now, I know after what you've gone through, that's kind of difficult to even yes. imagine that God is going to make me forget about what I've gone through. Well, that means that he got to bless you on a level that you've never been blessed on. Perhaps you never really got the blessing. You okay. had a blessing. Right. This one is called the blessing yes, from the God. So here it is, Joshua chapter 1. I'm moving fast. I'm moving fast. Joshua chapter 1. Now, for those of you at home, mm. read this text because it will really jump out at you. And I'm going to show you what God is saying in the season. It says again, it says, now after the death of Moses. Mm -hmm. Now, now I need you to see Moses. We're not talking literal right now because we're, 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 we're New Testament readers. And, but the, the, the whole Bible has keys and tools for a successful life. And we got to know this. And so when we read, we read from a spiritual standpoint to get the rich uh, a revelation out of this so I can apply it to my life. It says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, minister, Moses minister, saying, I think the Bible emphasizes this, that Moses, the servant of the Lord, yes, that means that there was a time period when Moses was leading a movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a time when Moses was leading a movement. And when the text starts out, it says he's the servant of the Lord. Don't take nothing away from who he is right. or what he's done or the magnitude of the work that he's done. You can't take nothing away from it because the Bible clearly says he was the servant of the Lord. He was the man that God had sanctioned for the time. He was operating under God's anointing. He was. Mm -hmm. But now the text says he did his time. Right. He did his time. And now it says after he is dead, the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Mm -hmm. This didn't speak or this was not heard by Joshua until he allowed what was to be what was. Mm -hmm. Now he says, it's my time. And I cannot feel uh, uh, some kind of way when God tell me I'm on deck. Mm -hmm. All right. I cannot relent when God says, <coughs> you're on deck, it's your time. I need you to step up. The reason why this is important is because there's a word in your mouth. And the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sun. Yes. What does that mean? There's a sun for every season and there's a word for the season that the sons are required to release. Yes. The healing of the land comes with the releasing of the word from the sons of the season. It is important that I understand that most, the word has got to be in season. Why? Because if you read Hebrews 11, chapter number 1, I'm going to unpack it. It says, now faith is what? A thing of four. Well, how do we get faith? The scripture says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, so then faith coming by hearing. Yeah. Now it says faith is coming by hearing. It, said, it is saying faith is coming by what you heard. Mm -hmm. Now what you heard did uh, produce a faith. Mm -hmm. But if now faith comes from now what you're hearing now, that means that if I'm going to be successful now, mm -hmm. I need to hear something when? No. Now. I got to hear something now. This is why the enemy will kill us through this word called honor. Because we don't know how to properly, we don't know how to properly put it in place. Now watch what the text says again. I got to see this now. It says, it says this, it says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. He said, when Moses was in place, Joshua, you honored him in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
But once I decided to take him, you cannot stunt or stop what you're doing constantly playing uh, uh, attention to Moses. Right. Moses was my servant. He was in his time. But now I need you to be prepared in your time. And you keep telling me you can't because of what was. God is the one that gives ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is God that gives ministry. It is, listen to me, it is God's anointing. Yes. It is God's anointing. Yes. Listen to me very carefully. It is God's anointing. The spirit comes from God. Mm -hmm. So that means that it is God's anointing. Yeah. No man have an anointing to give you. True. I'm sorry to tell you that. Mm. He got a mantle, but he don't have an anointing. Mm -hmm. This is important that you understand. Why is this important? Because it's time for you to move on. Yes. Now, what is, why do God allow Joshua to be the minister of Moses? Because God wants Joshua to see how ministry operates. Yes. Mm -hmm. He does not get Moses anointed. God has already prepared Joshua right. for his time. And the spirit that worked in Moses is the same spirit that's going to work in Joshua. Yes. Mm -hmm. Joshua got to understand this. Because Moses might not. Mm -hmm. Joshua can't be held up because he don't understand that the spirit comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Nobody can give you a double portion of this. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so now we, we come to these places where Elijah and Elisha is having this exchange and Elijah says I want a double portion of your spirit. Mm -hmm. No you don't Elisha. Oh. You don't. I know what you're saying but you don't want. Now we don't get, we, we, we look at the chariot moment when he's taken up right? Mm -hmm. But we don't understand that before he was taken up God had already told him to go down and, and anoint the boy that's going to take yeah, up and set in your office. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I already, already got him on schedule. Mm -hmm. He's not on schedule because he sees you taken up. He's on schedule because I already got him there. Go yes. back and read the text and tell you that I go down there and anoint him to sit in your office or sit in your seat. That's before you're taken up. He's already there. Now, I need a double portion of your spirit. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters, and this is going to bless you for the rest of your life. You don't need a double portion of Moses' spirit. You don't need it. Why? Because when God uh, 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 tells Moses through Jethro, he says, Moses, you are trying to do too much, son. You need to find some men. You need to find some men that can actually help you operate this ministry, right? Is that true? Now, is that true? Yeah. You need to find some men that can help you operate this ministry. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he says you need to find some, some elders that you trust. Check the text out. Check the text out. And so he takes them before the Lord. And what does the Lord say to Moses? He says, I'm going to give them of the spirit that I have given you. Yes. 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 That's interesting, right? I'm not going to give them your spirit. Because if I did, they would have double the excuses you had. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm going to give them my spirit. Remember, Moses, before I gave you my spirit, you were telling me you couldn't talk. Right. But when I put the spirit and anointed you, now you are bold enough to make a move. Mm -hmm. So I don't need a double portion of Moses' spirit. I need a double portion of the spirit that Moses has got upon yes. him. Yes. Just imagine if Elisha had gotten a double portion of Elijah's spirit, what would happen? He would have pulled the trigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pastor, when you get to stop, read the text. Because he's standing before the Lord, depressed, saying, Am mm -hmm. I, I'm not better than my father's, take my life. Yeah. So what if he get a double portion of that spirit and not the anointing? My God. Right. I need a double portion of God's spirit, not yes. a man's spirit, but God's spirit, because that's where the power is, because God has already ordained me for a time in his anointing. Mm -hmm. He already ordained me for a time in his anointing. So it's very crucial that we understand this in this season as we are moving forward because God is allowing us to go somewhere that has never been gone. Right, right. If I keep asking for what was, I'm going to keep getting what we already got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God is not trying to do that. He's trying to move. I'm speaking to somebody that needs to hear this. So now, here it is. He said, he says him very clearly. He says, Moses, my servant, is what? Dead. Yeah. I took him out. Yeah. You didn't. I did. It wasn't his idea for you to be next. All right. All right. It was my idea. Mm -hmm. I've already told him to take you before the people. Mm -hmm. That was God's idea. Mm -hmm. So what if Moses had to say, I'm not doing it. He says, I will get you before the people. Mm -hmm. If you are willing, Joshua. Okay. 
Hear what I'm saying? He still gets you before the people. Now, I need to say something very powerful because we're in crucial times. A mentor is an option. All right. It's not a mandate. Woo-wee. It's a privilege. Mm -hmm. A mentor is a privilege. Now, listen to me. You will get everywhere God wants you to get without a mentor. Mm -hmm. You can go through the route of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. But you'll still get there. Right. Why go through the route of hard knocks if there's somebody that can stop you from knocking your head? Yes, exactly. Okay. We got to read and look at this. It's not that I got to have this. It's a privilege for me to have it. Mm -hmm. So why does God want this to be understood? Because he don't want me to be bound by somebody that might have a problem and not want to release me. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, it's a blessing when you can find someone that understands your anointing and can help usher you there because of their experience. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible blessing. But the moment that they desire or decide that you are not the one, that should not stop what God has told you you were supposed to do. Amen. It cannot be the hindrance in the next season of your life. This cannot. I am not against fellowship. Mm -hmm. I am against you just gravitating to something that is not giving you keys for the next level of your life. God will give you people that understand your calling and your anointing because they'll understand what it took when they were trying to get to the place that they were trying to get to. This is so vital because this is a season that we got to move on. We are delayed. We are delayed because we don't understand. My people are perishing. Why? Because they don't lack knowledge. All right. Oh, it's the lack of knowledge. All right. Well, both of them. Mm -hmm. It's the lack of, I mean, the deficiency mm -hmm. in, and it's the desire for, mm -hmm. the lack of. It. Now he's developing a, in us again mm -hmm. the taste for information because it's time for us to move on. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, move on. Move on. Okay, now, so, so, so it says, it says, now the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, he came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Minister, uh, Moses minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is, that is such, man, that revelation just blew me up today when God revealed that to me. He says, I didn't call him the son of Moses. I called him the son of Nun. All right. You hear what I just said? He did not call Joshua the son of Moses. Mm -hmm. He says, you're the minister of Moses. Mm -hmm. In other words, you are to minister service under Moses' leadership. Mm -hmm. But if Moses, the one that you're ministering under, don't get it, don't think you're fatherless. Mm -hmm. You're right. the son of none. Mm -hmm. Don't think that your world is over, your life is ended. No, it's not. It's not. You will survive past this. Right. Pull yourself together, Joshua, because there's a people that I need you to lead into position. Yeah. This is burning in my spirit, man. Yeah. And it says, and the second verse says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. I, again, I got to emphasize this teaching. First verse starts out by saying, Moses, after the death of Moses, everybody say physical. Physical. And then on the second verse, it says, Moses, my servant, is dead again. Because even though people are gone, we, we are fighting. Now, this is negative and positive. We got to get this. There are some people right now that are fighting people that have been dead a long time. Alone, they've been dead physically a long time. Mm -hmm. Gone. And we are still fighting against them. We're still having encounters because of something they said. Because they said you wouldn't. And so every time God uh, drops it, uh, uh, energizes your spirit to move, somebody is standing before you even though physically they're gone. Yes. You still keep hearing them say, you ain't ready yet. Mm -hmm. You ain't ready yet. You got to pay some dues. Well, here's the question. How much are they? Mm. Yeah. How much are they? Yeah. So that we know. Now, again, this is not a kick. This is so urgent on God's heart that the sons of this season stand up and get ready to move because we see what is happening. It's the, the lack of a revelation for the time. 
When God reveals something in his word, there's nothing that can stop. It's too much contention and contending because we're speaking from the past and we're not speaking from the present. Because God's word has precedence over everything. When the enemy hears the word of God, he stands back. When he hears you, he stands up. And his desire is that we keep repeating what's said and not go after what God is saying. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's his greatest desire because he knows then that the faith won't rise in people because faith coming by hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Now faith. Mm-hmm. Now faith. Mm-hmm. So then faith coming by hearing. We've got to get this. And so second verse says, most of my servants are dead. Now therefore arise. Now that you understand that you have been released because God released you, he says, now it's time to stand up. Yes. It's time for you to stand in position. Get ready to move forward. No longer can you sit back with excuses of saying that I would have if they would allow me to. Yes. God says that's not your excuse in this season. If you arise, he's going to give you the energy to move forward. That's why there is an innovation uh, 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 in technology right now because God is breaking down the things that will hold us back when he gives us to create something. Mm-hmm. He says so many people right now are in such a financial uh, stronghold because they're trying to reduplicate something from a mentor yes. and they don't have the financial backing to even reduplicate that. And so they're going to stick themselves in a place of bondage financially because they're trying to mimic what they saw. God is not telling you to mimic. God is telling you to create. Yes. You are, if you would allow God, he is going to give you the spirit of a trailblazer. Mm-hmm. But a spirit of a trailblazer don't come, Joshua, until Moses is dead. All right. If you won't allow what Moses done to die, you will never be greater. Mm-hmm. The reason why you can't be greater is because you keep looking at a dying diagram. I didn't make that up. This is what the spirit of the Lord is speaking. Now it says, it says, it says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this challenge. You've been challenged by this challenge. Now it's time for you to get up and no longer will you let this be. See, we can, again, we can have church over here on this side of Jordan mm-hmm. and never even think about why should we be going across there? It's good over here. Right. It's good over here. The reason why I got to go over there because that's where your life is. Yes. God playing your life across this Jordan. You don't try to make a life over here. And you have some good days and then all of a sudden things fall off. And what's wrong with me? Because you didn't shift to the position that God told you to go in. There's a healing across there. Now it's going to take something to go across, but if you get across, you're going to find out that healing is waiting over you. You have expended the grace for the place that you're in. Move across. Go through this challenge. Yes. The challenge always builds something in you that you never knew you had. You don't even know you got it until you're challenged by it. You don't even know what you possess until, again, a king size anointing never arises until a king size challenge is issued and accepted. Yes, sir. Not only issued, but accepted. You won't have to accept what God has stuck before you. Get over or go over this Jordan. Thou and all these people. In other words, Joshua, this blessing that I put upon you, the word I put upon you, this calling I put upon you is not just for you. There's a people that are ready. So get up and make a move. Bust the move. You know what? Your family don't even listen to you right now. <laughs> you know why? Because you're doing a lot of talking. They ain't seen a lot of manifestation. Yes. Right. You got people that are practical listeners. You telling them about all. Now, if you deal with a church baby, you can say anything. We're going to shout with you. But there are people that are saying, I'm not shouting because you, you actually you're lying to me. Mm-hmm. Maybe sitting in, in service looking like, what is these people shouting about? I know this person. They ain't nothing like that. <laughs> they ain't nothing like that. So, so, so now, for those of us that have been witnesses to our family, you know what? God is going to give us the tool to win them. Yes. You know what it's called? Manifestation. Because yes. they can't argue with that. Mm-hmm. They won't be able to argue with manifestation. Mm-hmm. And God is not trying to withhold the manifestation. But if you have not learned there, you can't live there. Yes. You don't even have a word. We don't even have a word to live in that land called blessed. Mm-hmm. Because if we have not learned in Revelation, the first thing we're going to see in that land is giant. Yes. And we're going to see ourselves as grasshopper because our Revelation says we can't abide over there with giant. Listen, if you're going to say that God <laughs> is sending me to a big place, what you going to see in a big place? Mm-hmm. You're going to see big things. Mm-hmm. So if he said he's a big place, expect to leave big things. Mm-hmm. 
But you got to know, if he said go there and there are big things there, what is he going to do? He's going to give me the things to deal with the big things. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that means that if it takes more finances to get over there, he's, he's going to increase my money. All right. mm -hmm. If I just cross to Jordan, he increases my money. Mm -hmm. I don't see it over here. Well, you're not over there. You're right. over here. you got enough to survive here. You've been here long enough to survive. Go across there and I will increase. A shift will cause a shift. A shift would cause a shift. I can do it. Once God bless me with it, I'm going to show it. No. He says, give me some faith. Yeah. Go over there. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to see my hand move. You haven't shown me that you trust me yet. Right. You haven't shown me that you trust me yet. You're still talking about it. I don't told you to be about it. Yeah. Get up, arise, go over this Jordan, down all these people, and the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Third verse reading, it says, every place that your Every place that your soul and your feet shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. Listen, I'm saying something to you that I said to Moses. I'm going to give you an opportunity to get it even though he didn't. Mm -hmm. So you can't say if Moses didn't get it, I can't. He says, I promised this to Moses, yeah. but I'm allowing you to go. In other words, don't make the same mistake. Right. No. Don't make the same mistake. Let's go. Let's cross this Jordan. Now, watch this. He says, everywhere that your feet, everywhere that your feet, this is, I got it, I got it. Everywhere that the sole of your feet tr shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. Now watch this. Listen to the fourth verse. Interesting. The fourth verse says, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. This is not pie in the sky. Yes. This is God's original intention, uh, intentions coming into effect. What did he tell Adam? You're going to take dominion over the land. And so God, when he promised them to go over into promise, what is he saying? Let me give you the land dimension that I want you to have. Yes. Because my dominion is in the earth. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. My dominion is right here in the earth. Now, watch what he says to them. Very powerful. He says, here's a land of promise that I promised your fathers, right? He says, it is already yours because I promised it a long time ago. Yes. As a matter of fact, I promised it to Abraham 400 years mm -hmm. ago. So it's not a problem with my promise. Mm -hmm. It's a problem with you taking possession. Oh, my God. God. I'm going to say it again. It's not a problem with God's promise. It's a problem with taking possession. Now, everywhere across Jordan that he named belonged to the children of Israel. Right? Mm -hmm. But that does not mean because God promised you take possession. If you don't get up and go over there, it can be a promise all day. Now, at that time, it's already 400 years past and God has promised. So he's saying to us, you can look at it, you can talk about it. And if you don't put your feet on it, forget about it. It's not changing what I said. It's still the promise that I promised. I'm looking for some people that's got a word that'll provoke them to bust the move. Yes. Provoking them to make a move. Now the next the next verse says, the fifth verse says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. The rest of your life should be the best of your life. Now Watch what he tells them again. If you go to this place that I promised, even though it's a challenge over there, there's great obstacles to get over there. If you get over there, there shall not be a man able to stand over there. Now, you think that you're standing over here and I'm able to uh, maintain this, but he's saying you're having problems over here. Go to the place of challenge so that no man can stand before you over there because that's where I am now. Mm -hmm. Can you see him over there across the Jordan saying, come over here? Mm -hmm. This is where I'm at. I'm over here. I need you over here so that no man can stand before you. Listen to this. This is, this is interesting. Spiritually speaking, what is he telling these people? He's telling these people physically right here that no man in your past, in your present, or your future mm -hmm. will be able to stand before you. It's also a challenge. 
There's some people that you dealt with at 10 that done you wrong. They did horrible things to you. When you cross this Jordan, you won't have to contend with them no longer. Wow. Right. You are focused on them because you're not focused on me. All right. All right. They got your attention because you won't put your attention on me. Okay. The only way you get over what was is you see your what is bigger than Come what on. your what was. Right. Exactly. You got to make a move in your right now that will bless you beyond what you used to think about. When you are blessed, when you get you a brand new car, you don't want to go back to that old one. Mm -hmm. You get in there and you smell the newness of this car. And you don't have to put oil in that other one and air that tire up every day. You don't want to go back to that. And if you do, you crazy. When I get the smell of a new car that starts up from my house and it warmed up when I get out there, you think I'm going to go in there to get it when I got to pump the accelerator and prime it and then it finally starts and then you be watching your phone because I might have to call it because this thing might shut down. Oh, so yeah. Once you get blessed with your brand new, you don't want to go back Amen. to that. Amen. You don't want to go back to that. You don't want to. I want to smell some. I want, my car smell new when I get in. Right. This is the way that the blessings of the Lord is trying to overtake us, is that we forget about what was. Uh -huh. He's trying to rearrange my mind. He's trying to bless me on the level that no man in my traumatized past yeah. would be able to torment me in my victorious future. He's trying to give me something. This is the only way it's going to happen. This is the only way it's going to happen. It's not going to happen any other way. If I don't get in the place that God is calling me in, if I don't have enough in me to say, God, you told me to do this, and I don't care what man says I can't, I'm going for it, then I'm going to live in my traumatized past. I'm going to wander in a wilderness when I should not be wandering. Are you ready for God's instruction? The first thing he says is arise. Go across. This is Jordan. I need you to get over this and move into place. Everybody say move, move in into place. place. And now this is interesting. Interesting. I, I got to read the end of this text because I got to show you this. It says, there shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. The rest of my life, I'm going to be able to stand and nothing can stop me. Yes. Right? right? Look at the next part of this text. As I was... With the one you admire, Come on. and you said I could never be them. Uh -huh. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Now that's interesting. Now what is he saying? He says you admire Moses because you saw him work, mm -hmm. and you never thought I could be there. My my only thing I could do is take Moses' briefcase. Well, this season God says I'm gonna give you yours. Right. And as I was with Moses. So shall I be with you. Now let me let me give you a spiritual key right here because this is important. Whenever God moves on the next, He always increases the responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even Jesus says, "Once you get what I'm giving, these and greater works mm -hmm. shall ye do." You look at Elijah and Elisha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elijah stopped the heaven for three and a half. Elisha comes and prophesies it's going to be seven. I just double what you did. We got to get this. Every time an anointing is released, it's doing greater things. Why? Not because of the personality, but because of God's plan. Mm -hmm. He's escalating his plan, and so he's doing more. The, the anointing that he's releasing now, it should be so powerful that we should not be able to recognize this in our history. Yes. All right. We should not be able to recognize it in our history. It should be so strong now. And if we don't see it like that, you know what we call for? Listen to me. We call for a revival. Yes. Because yes. God is doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Are we going back or are we moving forward? Oh my God. I have not heard so many people conflicted in their spirit. We are getting revival because God is doing a new thing. Yeah. It says what your problem is, some of you seen the house in its first glory. Mm -hmm. And you were so caught up into the first glory that you can't see it in what I'm about to do. You can't even recognize what I'm about to do because you thought it was so good back then. Mm -hmm. He says what he's releasing now is so huge yeah. that if you can walk in it, the latter rain is much greater than the yes. first. 
you won't even even recognize what God is doing. You talking about healing? You talking? We, then that's why the enemy wants us to stay back there because what we are being challenged with now is different than what we've ever been challenged with before. And so we need a move of God like we've never seen before. Yes. We do. We do. And it does not happen until the sons of the season rise up. It does not happen until we get this thing together and understand that God said that what was is what was. Honor what was, but don't let it stop you from walking into what is. Yes. Because there's a people that you've got to take across this Jordan. They don't get there until you rise up. Now, i got to go back. i got to read this real quick. Now, watch this. It says, as I was with Moses. I need you to see this. As I was with Moses. As I was with Moses. Are y'all listening to me? Yeah. As I was with Moses. Listen to what text said. So I will be with thee. Yes. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. I don't care if Moses don't like you. I'm never leaving or forsaken. The spirit comes from the Lord. Nobody can take your anointing from you because nobody can give it to you. Mm -hmm. God planned it like that because he didn't want somebody to be able to get mad at you and say, now I'm snatching your ministry. He did not want you to think that if somebody decided that where you were going in your ordination or what God has instructed you to do, that they can tell you that I'm robbing you and taking your this and you won't be able to operate. They might be able to take something yeah. from you, but they can't take your anointing from you because they didn't yes. give it to you, so yes. they can't take it away. So listen to the text again. It says, as I was with Moses... So I will be with you. We misinterpreted the scripture and what it actually said. Let me show you what it said. It did not say, as Moses was, so shall ye be. That's what we thought it said. I'm going to be just like Moses. I'm going to be a carbon copy. You know, cloning is illegal. Yes. Cloning is illegal. And at that point, the enemy got have the right to say, Moses, I know. And you ain't him. All right. You're trying to disguise yourself as Moses. Moses is gone. I know he's gone. <laughs> I know he's gone. I know. I know he's gone because I, I don't wrestle over his body. I know he's gone. Now you gonna tell me you Moses? We don't need another Moses. We need a Joshua. Yes. To stand up in his own power and his anointing, because God is only gonna do what's next with who's next. 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 And if who's next trying to be what was, then what's to come can't come. Mm -hmm. And so we got to understand that this is the season that God is raising up. So, so as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. I'm going to give you because you are the next. Mo Moses' body was what is called a marker of mortality. Mm -hmm. We all here are markers of mortality. Pinch yourself and if it hurt. That means that this is going to lead somebody. Rest assured, when you leave, God's plan and ordination is not stopping. My God. It's the spirit that has already got somebody in place to take it on. Listen, we have been confused in so many areas. We think the person that for run, run for us is the person that we run with. That's just what we automatically thought. That if they're going to forerun me, or if I'm coming out to somebody, it's got to be the person that before me. I, I have had to have run with them to really receive an anointing. That's what we were taught. Well, John says it very clearly. He was the forerunner for Jesus. Yes. Wasn't it in what the text said? And John says, I'm baptizing him, and I know him not. Yeah, right. How can you forerun the person that you don't know? Mm -hmm. It is not a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. And so there will be people that download in you you might not have never met. God might give you an exchange in the airport. Yes. And if you can't recognize it, then you will not uh, 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 allow yourself to feel the exchange. I, I can only be downloaded in the people that I'm around. Yeah. The devil is a lie. Mm -hmm. Because there's some people that you're around can't even support what you got right yes. now. Yeah. God's going to have to send somebody in for them to see yeah. what's inside you so that they can say, I see what's in you. Yeah. It is not that they are giving you anything. They are not validation. Don't seek for validation from flesh. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you don't have it from God, before you enter into your mother's womb, you got a problem. Mm -hmm. You can only seek for verification. Mm -hmm. 
Because God is the only one that can validate. I seek for verification. Why? It takes one to know one. Yeah. If you're not one, you can't validate what I got. Yeah. So I'm not going to be upset if you're not one and you got several titles. Mm. Everybody that's got a title don't know who you are. Mm. Especially in this season that God is doing something brand new. There's very few people, and for those of you that are listening to the sound of my voice, you are a trailblazer. Yeah. You are a trailblazer. Why can't you believe that God is trying to do something in you that's never been done? Right. Get over yourself and say, yes, Lord. Get over yourself and say, yes, Lord. Yes, I am Lord. available. Yes, yes Lord. What yes, you want to do with me, I'm ready to do it. In spite of what people say about me, yeah. I'm ready to go. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. This is the only place that healing comes. Healing comes. Yes. This is the only place that the word of God can stand in its fullest form when people that are willing vessels say yes. yes My body is here to be a willing vessel to God's call. Yeah. That's why I'm here. You're not here just to be here. You're here on purpose. God is ready for your yes to echo like never before. To echo like never before. Listen to me and I'm going to say this and I'm out of here. I'm out of here. There is a, an assignment shift that is happening right now for so many people right now. Be prepared and allow God to shift at his desire. It don't have to make sense to you. It does not have to make sense. He will acclimate you in the trip. If you would give God a yes... He will acclimate you in the trip. Mm -hmm. This, you can pray all day, but until you say yes to God's desire on your life, mm -hmm. prayer don't change this. Right. It's a yes that changes this. Mm -hmm. You've got mm -hmm. to say yes to this call. Mm -hmm. You've got to say, Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Lord, yes. Mm -hmm. This is a season that you're going to have to really get really intimate in your relationship with God. This is a season of consecration. I'm going to say it again because I said it today and we got to get this. Why do God, why do I need to consecrate? Consecration is not for me to get or to make God happy with me. Jesus did it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus done it. He satisfied, as Isaiah said, everything that was needed to, to please God. He did it. The cross work did it. It repaired the breach between me and God. Why do I consecrate? So that I won't be distracted when he's trying to download into me the plans for my future. Yes. When I start preparing my mind, when I start preparing my heart, I hear right. I hear without the filters that are happening that is causing me. We are seeing so much different stuff come on come out and we're seeing so many different acts that is messing up our vision mm -hmm. and we're concocting things so I need to be consecrated I need to have a definitive prayer life mm -hmm. I need to hear God because what he's about to say I've got to know that this is God speaking to me because it's going to be crazy yes. and if you don't have a closeness with God you don't think you're crazy Yes. Because of what he's saying. So it's a consecration season, definitely. And for those of you that are pushing your plate away to make God happy with you, I'm sorry. That's not the design of it. Yes. The design is to get rid of the distraction. Right. The distraction. The distraction. We have been distracted in this season. And so we are doing things that don't count. <laughs> We're doing things that don't even count. And we're not seeing the manifestation because they don't, they, unless they are accurately applied, they don't manifest what you want out of it. Yeah. And so that's why we're seeing people doing so many things and they don't see the results. It makes us look crazy when we don't know the proper application. Yes. We're abusing things. Anything used for purposes in which it was not created for is called abuse. Yeah. That's even in your spiritual life. You are doing things that does not even count until you get the right heart and the right meaning of it all. It does not count. So this season, we're getting back to the place where we are hearing God clearly, where we are hearing him clearly. 
were getting ready for a move from God that has never hit this earth before. I've got to be in place for it. I've got to prepare myself for it. My prayers have got to change. Yes. I'm praying now, not Lord, if you've done it for him, you're going to do it for me. Mm -hmm. My prayer now, if you've never done it for anybody yes, else, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to be the first one to do it. So I'm prepping myself for the great. I'm not prepping myself for what was. I'm prepping myself for what is. We are thankful in this season. Again, network all over the world, wherever you are. This is a season of preparation. I'm going to be sending out information because we're preparing for a move. And an authentic anointing from God. And I did say authentic. Yeah. I did say authentic, something yes. that is real and is authentic because God is going to give you in your specific call what he wants. That, that's the thing that makes it authentic. God is always going to be authentic, but we make it a, 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 a counterfeit because we want to do what was when God has given us something original. Mm -hmm. And so we are in this season, God is swinging again because he's going to do what he promised us that he would do. Yes. Are you ready for this move? This is an yes. authentic move. Yes. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. There are some people that have never heard God before. You're going to hear them in this season. Yes, sir. And it's going to be so clear. You won't listen. This won't be a season. We were taught that we were to get into every dog fight, every fight over the word of God. We felt compelled to get in and fight with people over philosophical stuff. The, 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 the scripture says, John 10, it says, my sheep hear my voice. You want to know who is ready to hear. Because they're going to be compelled to call. come. He said this very clearly in the scripture. He says, other sheep I. He didn't say I was even looking for them. He says, other sheep I. Yeah. Damn, I already got these sheep. And, and, uh, and them I must yes. bring. I have them and I must. Yes. The question is, who can I trust them with? All right. Who can I trust? Who can I trust them to lead them into greener pastures? Mm -hmm. or, or as opposed to taking them into total bondage? Yes. I need people that I can trust because these people are coming from places that we never recognized before. And they have already a knowledge because they've already been called. And God wants to know that he can trust us with these people. God wants to know that he can, he, can, he can send them to you and you won't put them in bondage. Mm -hmm. When you think you done gave them freedom and it's nothing but total bondage. Now they are fighting more now than they ever fought before. Because you gave them something that never worked for you. You can't do that this season. This is a whole different season, a whole different level. If you're ready, I promise you that if you will go before the Lord in this season, he's going to give you something that you never had. Yes. He's going to lead you into a place that you, this, this is seriously a time that there's going to be a closeness to God. I have a heart to be close to God. I want to hear what he's saying. Yes. I want to hear what he's saying to me now. I want to hear what he's got for me now. Lord, tell me what you got now. Thank you for what was. I appreciate it. But what is coming is greater than what was. And so that means that we got to come. We got to get closer to it. I was, I was teaching you on yesterday how the scripture says in, in 2 Timothy how we should flee youth for loss. Interesting, right? Flee youth for loss. In that great house. There are vessels of honor and dishonor. Yes. Vessels of wood. And, and notice what the text says. That the, the determining factor for honor and dishonor is not God predetermined who would be vessels of honor and dishonor. Mm -hmm. As we were taught our entire life. It says if a man would purge himself of these things, yes. he would make himself a vessel of honor. So yes. the honor vessel is determined yes. by you purging or deciding, I want what God's got. Yes. And so it says flee you for lust. In other words... You are immature when you get to your age and you still going after stuff, trying to prove something to yourself. I still got it. You are immature. You can't make a definitive decision that I found what I want and that that's the one I want. I got to have 10 to prove to myself that I win. You are immature. I don't care what title you got. I don't care how many you got. I don't care who gave it to you. You are immature. 
when you cannot decide that I can let this go to get to hold to what God wants. Right. I can let this go to let make sure I'm I'm not distracted when God comes to my space. I've got to see that as more than all the rest of this stuff, even though my flesh is telling me I deserve it all. Yes. It's called youthful lust. Yes. You're immature. Get your old self together <laughs> so you can obey what God is saying yes. in this season. Amen. 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 And find people that are ready to move in your direction. Yes. If you're committed to God and what he's trying to do in your calling, find people that are committed to your calling. Everybody else, they can just keep talking. <laughs> keep it moving. Because I'm not going to let you distract me in this season. Yes. I got to get yes. what God promised me. And that's going to take a dedication. Right. So that's why we consecrate. So I can be focused on what God is saying. You know they say turn down for what? Yeah. I'm going to tell you why. So you can hear what God says. Yes. Amen. Let's give a little hand praise for the Lord. Amen. We thank you again for this Bible study network all over the world. Listen, we are moving. We are shifting. Yes. There's innovation and technology that God is going to allow us to be privy to. Because he says what he's done in the dying diagram that was, I'm shifting because this is an innovative world. Everybody else is moving and shifting. Uh -huh. And only in the body of Christ we want to stay the same. That contradiction. The enemy wants us to stay there. The enemy don't want us to go and find the places that people are. That's what we know. That's what Jesus done. He said, you out there, I'm coming for you. Right. I'm coming for you. I come to where you are. Amen. Amen. Get ready for it. If God prompts you to go, 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 go in Jesus' name. Blessings, blessings. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the hearers of this word. I thank you for this new season of our lives. I thank you for the glory that's being revealed. Lord, I thank you for those that are listening to me right now. And they say, little bitty me. Lord, let them continue to see the, their flesh as small. But allow them to recognize that there's a God on the inside of them that is much larger than what they see on the outside. Yeah. Lord, give them the fortitude to hear in this season and be bold enough to stand up in your power. Yes. Lord, we give your name and praise the honor and glory for it right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God for that. Thank God for that. We're excited about this. Amen. Again, I want to reiterate this. I want to reiterate this. This is an unusual season. Yes. An unusual time. Right. I would admonish all of you guys. Please put your ear. The best posture in this season mm -hmm. is to turn your ear up toward heaven. Mm -hmm. Don't take it for granted that you already know. Mm -hmm. I already know how this goes. Please don't do that this time. It's going to take some. This is going to be difficult but very doable. Yes, sir. Don't, don't think and don't take it for granted that you already know. Allow God to speak again to you because he's trying to say something. God wants you to commit yourself to him. Yes. He's got, he wants you to commit yourself to him. It's going to